Good afternoon. The Committee on Appropriations is called to order. Uh, so that everyone knows we are in the eighth extraordinary session. We have two bills before us today. That is SB 34 by Mr. Alex Padilla, Senator, as well as SB 26 in the uh, eighth extraordinary session. That is Senator uh, Pavley. Um, noting the absence of a quorum, we're going to begin as a subcommittee. Sergeants, be so kind enough to please call the absent members. Uh, we have, I want to welcome our Vice Chair of the Appropriations Committee. As always, Ms. Conway, welcome. I also want to welcome the, the newest member uh, appointed uh, by Speaker uh, Perez to the uh, Appropriations Committee. That is Mr. Chris Norby. Mr. Chris Norby, very welcome. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. So we will begin uh, as a subcommittee. Uh, we'll wait for the members to come in again. Sergeants, I want to please underscore to call in the members. We have DOF with us today. Uh, Mr. Padilla, welcome. You want to come on down? Absolutely. Senator Padilla, good afternoon. You have before us SB 84 uh, with regards to 15 projects, uh, I believe 11 projects before the state thermal projects as well as four non-thermal photovoltaic projects that are before local uh, government. So please uh, proceed. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair, members of the, uh, the subcommittee for now and committee when there's a quorum. Uh, before you is SB 34 that I've introduced in the eighth extraordinary session, uh, as you mentioned, to uh, facilitate the uh, review and siting process for as many as 11 solar thermal power plants currently under review at the State Energy Commission, as well as up to four photovoltaic projects that are currently under review by local counties, but all of which are uh, recipients of Federal Recovery Act dollars. Uh, collectively, these projects would add more than 5,000 megawatts of renewable electrical generation to California's grid and create 5,000 direct jobs and an additional 10,000 indirect jobs uh, in the states. Part of the Recovery Act grant requirements is that projects break ground before the end of the year. And implicit in that requirement is that the projects be reviewed and si approved for siting by the end of the year as well. So what this bill would do is provide alternate mechanisms uh, for a developer to meet their environmental mitigation obligations uh, mm -hmm. through the payment of an in lieu fee to the Department of Fish and Game. Uh, as opposed to a project developer securing the specific mitigation on their own. The bill would also permit project developers to pay additional fees uh, should they choose to, to support the hiring of third-party consultants by the Energy Commission uh, for the review uh, work that needs to be done. Uh, and finally, would require a fee to support the work of the Department of Fish and Game to process incidental take permits. Uh, lastly, the bill would also uh, authorize the department uh, to establish a recruitment and retention differential pay program uh, for the siting division staff through the end of the year. I uh, want to just comment on a couple of things that are in the analysis regarding fiscal impact. Number one, <clears throat> there is sufficient funding at the Energy Commission to pay to support the differential pay for staff. They just need the authority to implement such a program. Number two, Fish and Game is currently required to process take permits within their budget. So with this bill, we're actually augmenting the resources they would have to actually accomplish that. And number three, uh, the mitigation work that the Fish and Game would be required to do if solar project developers take advantage of the in lieu fees is to be completely covered by those fees. So while it's important that Fish and Game uh, be as accurate as possible with their estimates, uh, just in case, we've also built in uh, an, a, uh, excuse me, a, uh, as a security a backstop for cost overruns. So that's written into the bill. Uh, there's also a series of author's amendments uh, that were acknowledged yesterday in policy committee that are being put across the desk by this committee. I just want to clarify again one minor change to those amendments, and that's on page 9, lines 36 through 38. We're replacing the 5% cap language uh, that was stricken in the March 8th version of the bill uh, with, the, uh, with the language that's uh, uh, in front of you. So uh, this has been shared with 
both sides uh, of the committee, uh, as well as the staff in policy committee. With that, I want to thank you for your time. Uh, I certainly ask for your vote, and I would be happy to answer questions with me today. I'll let them introduce themselves. They're changing the roster on me. Thank you, Senator uh, Padilla. Your amendments, uh, the amendments are duly noted from the policy committee. Uh, why don't we go to uh, those in support of the measure? Good afternoon. My name is Kim Delfino, and I'm the California Director for the uh, Defenders of Wildlife. And uh, we've been working on the issue of siting, properly siting and uh, mitigating um, ener renewable energy sites, particularly in the desert. Uh, we've been working on the um, bill on this bill and uh, are in support of the bill. Believe it's an important bill to move forward in terms of trying to address a very um, important issue, which is how to assemble on a very rapid basis, given the deadlines for the RF funded projects, large amount of mitigation lands that would be necessary uh, to permit uh, those projects that are able to move through the per permitting process. This gives Fish and Game some uh, important tools, both in advance mitigation and um, in lieu fee. Uh, I would just note that, you know, generally speaking, and I believe it was noted in the in the analysis that the d environmental community is not particularly uh, wild about the in lieu fees in general. However, we feel that no in pun this intended. Yeah, right? <laughs> no pun intended. Um, but it, we believe that enough sideboards have been created uh, in the in the desert context with the linkage to the large uh, conservation plan that's moving forward right now. And um, so with that being said, we think that this bill strikes the right balance between um, moving projects forward and protecting the environment and would urge your eye vote. Thank you, Ms. Delfino. Uh, next, uh, witness and support. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members, my name is Shannon Eddy. I'm the executive director of the Large Scale Solar Association. Um, we strongly support this bill as it's being amended today. Um, I echo many of, of Kim's uh, sentiments. This bill is a culmination of a lot of conversations that the industry has had with labor and with the environmental community. And we believe that the, this bill is one that definitely facilitates the processing of these projects through the permitting processes. Um, and at the same time, it doesn't compromise environmental standards. Um, we also feel like it, it definitely um, has the necessary elements to help improve uh, staffing resources at both agencies, which is really needed right now. So we urge your support. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next witness, please. Dillette Oldberg, representing Edison International. We're here because we, uh, the utility, have a responsibility for meeting RPS requirements. We need to bring on these new renewable facilities to meet those requirements. There are RF funding that is uh, necessary to finance those projects and without that funding they won't or will be much more difficult to fund and to actually uh, get the uh, projects developed. So for the reasons previously explained and uh, also for RPS requirements we support the bill. Okay, thank you very much. I'm going to ask the, the following witnesses to uh, be brief uh, uh, in your remarks. Next witness. Victoria Rome with the Natural Resources Defense Council and we're in support. We believe the bill provides helpful changes to the existing process to make it more efficient but still environmentally sound. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chair and members, Ed Manning with KP on behalf of First Solar. First Solar has a 500 megawatt uh, photovoltaic project in the desert planning area. It'll create 300, over 300 jobs for three years. Um, we are also entitled to a $30 million ERA grant, which is critical to the project. This bill helps us get there, uh, and we strongly support it and thank, thank the chair and the members for their support of the bill. Thank you, Mr. Manning. Uh, next witness. Mr. Chairman, members, Donna Brownsey uh, here for the Solar Alliance, which is an organization of over 30 uh, PV solar companies. Uh, jobs, 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 and jobs, and that's why we support this bill. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next witness. Thank you. My name is Catherine Brandenburg. I'm with the Flanagan Law Firm representing NextEra Energy Resources, and we also have two large solar thermal plants um, that are in the hopper and would like to get this through to help us out. Thank you so much. Thank you. Next witness. Good afternoon, Chairman Members. Delaney Hunter on behalf of Tessera Solar, also a large solar developer. We need the bill and urge your support. Thank you. Uh, next witness. Good afternoon. Brenda Coleman on behalf of the California Chamber of Commerce in strong support for reasons previously stated. Thank you. Good afternoon, members of the chair and members of the committee. Darla Ginsler for California Council of Land Trust in support of the bill with the amendments you're going to accept. Thank you. Uh, we have a motion that's been made uh, by Ms. Skinner. We have a second uh, by Mr. Isidore Hall. Next witness in support, Mr. Hansen. Uh, Jay Hansen, State Building Trades Council in support. Thank you very much. Other witnesses in support? Seeing none, 
Witnesses in opposition. Also see none, do you have, do you have a file? Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, Miriam and Shanita with the Department of Finance. This uh, Energy Commission has not provided an estimate for the siding costs, but we understand that they would be in the range of $500,000 per project or approximately $8 million for all of the eligible projects. Additionally, uh, CEC would incur costs of $266,000 in 9-10 and $488,000 in 10-11 to fund recruitment and retention differential. The CEC has indicated that it could absorb these costs and the costs um, to the Department of Fish and Game for both the site, the um, uh, the takings permit um, as well as the mitigation, uh, uh, managing the mitigation do appear to be covered by fees in the bill. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, any questions from members? Uh, seeing none, I do believe we have a <coughs> quorum. Uh, Madam Secretary, if you could be so kind enough, please call the roll. De Leon. Present. Conway. Yes. Amiano. Bradford. Aye. Calderon. Aye. Cotto. Clinton. Davis. Fuentes? Present. Hall? Present. Harkey? Miller? Nielsen? Present. Norby? Here. Skinner? Here. Solario? Torlickson? Here. Huffman? Here. Oh. Okay, we do have a quorum that's been established. We do have a motion that's been made by Ms. Skinner and it's been seconded by Mr. Isidore Hall as well as Mr. Joe Cotto. Uh, Senator Padilla, I just want to commend you for uh, your hard work. Uh, I know uh, in lieu of mitigation or in lieu, the concept of in lieu doesn't make all environmentalists terribly happy and I can understand that. Uh, nonetheless, you do have 11 uh, thermal projects uh, in front of you that have to be uh, submitting their uh, uh, grant proposals to, to secure and draw down the ARA dollars by a certain time frame. So I, 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 recommend, I, I commend you as well as the environmental groups in coming together to try to uh, forge a deal so we can create the jobs uh, as quick as possible and at the same time, you know, safeguard our environment or in the lieu of mitigation, having the costs up front. So thank you and uh, uh, congratulations for all hard work. Uh, as I said, we have a motion by Ms. Skinner. We have a second by Mr. Zidore Hall. Uh, this motion passes as amended on an April call. If I may, be before it's official and on the book. Go right ahead. Uh, I believe a sub member Salas wanted to be added on as a co-author. Okay. If that could be done through this set of amendments, I'd appreciate that. And uh, this is enjoyed by partisan support both in the Senate as well as the Assembly Policy Committee. Sounds good. Thank, Thank you very much. Have a good day. Today. Thank you. We have uh, the motions already passed. It's Thank a you. roll call. Thank you. Uh, Senator Pavley. Yes. Did I say B? I'm sorry. I meant a roll call. I meant a roll call. Senator Pavley, good afternoon and welcome. Uh, this is our last bill before us today in the eighth extraordinary session. That is SB 26. Before we get into your comments with regards to uh, the PACE, uh, the establishment of the uh, PACE fund, I do want to welcome and recognize, if I can get his attention, I know he's engaged in a very thoughtful conversation, uh, Mr. Jared Huffman, who has been selected by uh, Speaker John Perez uh, to grace us with his presence today on the Appropriations Con Committee for the Eighth Extraordinary Session. So, very welcome, welcome. Okay, uh, Senator Pavley, please proceed with uh, right, SB thank, uh, 26. Thank you for that warning about Mr. Huffman being in the committee. Changes my whole presentation. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Um, I want to let you know about the uh, PACE program. Uh, first of all, it has um, obtained bipartisan support not only in the Senate, but two policy committees in the Assembly heard this bill yesterday, both local government and natural resources with bipartisan support. Uh, this bill is a voluntary program to reduce energy costs. It'll spur the creation of thousands of jobs and reduce the cost to homeowners and small businesses for loans for energy efficiency improvement. Lots of times those expensive upfront capital costs prevent homeowners and small businesses from investing in energy efficiency. But the PACE program, which means Property Assessed Clean Energy, provides that opportunity by putting an assessment on the property tax that's paid off over 20 years. This loan or these improvements stay with the property so if someone sells their property it goes on to the next owner. It makes a lot of sense. And I should give credit to the cities that pilot, piloted this program, uh, Berkeley, San Francisco and then followed by Sonoma County and Palm Desert and others. It's a great program. This builds on their efforts. 
wanted to start out uh, with also going over some of the amendments um, that we would be taking in um, assembly appropriations. Um, one, it will, um, an amendment would be to correct a drafting area in citing local government's authority. This was uh, asked by the local government and agreed to take it in appropriations. Number two, clarifies that prevailing wage would only apply to PACE bonds that are voluntarily utilizing the state reserve proposed in this bill. Senator Doesn't Pavley, apply to homes. let me just establish uh, for the record that we do have a motion that's been made by Mr. Tom Amiano. It's been seconded by Mr. O'Hall, so please proceed. Is that a suggestion to be brief? Am I the only thing between you and the rest of your afternoon? Please proceed, please okay, proceed. Got it. Uh, I just wanted to go over the amendments. Sure, since go right ahead. Important. Uh, number three, and it is your right to do so. Ensure that local governments taking advantage of this program offer financing for energy efficiency improvements, not just solar, Ms. Skinner. <laughs> and also, uh, the Fourth Amendment, keep the $50 million appropriated by this bill in the California Energy Commission's Renewable Resource Trust Fund to be assessed by CAFTA at their request. And so it was a way to facilitate the movement of money that uh, worked for both entities. Um, this bill is designed to accelerate the use of one of the most promising financing programs. I've told you it'll spread the upfront cost, which is the main uh, problem in, in um, financing these uh, energy efficiency programs. The bill creates a new program in the state treasurer's office in the California Alternative Energy and Advanced Transportation Financing Authority, which will administer reserve to make local PACE funding more attractive. A $50 million reserve fund coming from the CEC, the Renewable Trust Fund, will serve as a credit enhancement to further lower financing costs. This is a great program, a win-win for creating new jobs. It's a good way to finance investments for homeowners and small businesses, and at the end of the day, save money on your utility bills. The sponsor of the bill is Environmental Entrepreneurs E2, and with me today is Bob Epstein. Okay. Uh, Mr. Epstein, supporters, please okay. proceed. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Um, my name is Bob Epstein. E2 is an association of more than 600 business people from around California. And we've, we're sponsoring this bill because we see an opportunity to reduce financing costs, resulting in more construction work that can happen in homes that want to do it. It's all voluntary, resulting in more, in more jobs. That's our goal behind, behind the bill. And um, the, uh, our estimates are that this could scale the, the energy retrofit business in California up to a billion dollars. At that point, it would be more than 10,500 direct jobs, 10,000 indirect jobs, and about 68 million in revenue, which consists uh, of a significant amount from sales tax, the rest from, um, from income tax uh, from newly employed, newly employed people. So we, we urge your support uh, on this bill, and I thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Epstein. Next witness in support. Victoria Rome with the Natural Resources Defense Council in support. Thank you. Uh, next witness. Mr. Chair, members, Jay Hansen with the State Building Construction Trades Council. Uh, we've been very encouraged about this piece of legislation. This is a jobs bill for us. It's going to be a great opportunity to put some folks to work in a really uh, interesting industry that's really on the cutting edge. By providing this flexibility to enable uh, companies to get a lower interest rate to be able to finance these projects, you're going to have an opportunity to put people to work at projects that are going to be, in, to a degree, subsidized by the state's money. And that's why uh, we've had a little bit of a dispute with uh, some folks on having prevailing wage be part of this bill. And I just want to, I, I need to address that because a couple of the folks that are going to come after me are going to talk about that. When the state provides a benefit, that triggers prevailing wage. And the state provides a benefit th through this bill by allowing a lower financing for the folks that want to take advantage of this. That's a great thing. And you know what? Prevailing wage is a good thing. And I've talked to a lot of members in the building, Democrats and Republicans, that don't have a problem supporting prevailing wage. Unfortunately, we seem to have disputes with staff sometimes who like to get in the middle of members and uh, this policy. Prevailing wage means that there's a set rate for wages. Uh, our average workers on one of these projects is going to make $50,000 a year. That's not a lot of money. I mean, if folks think they should make, be making less than $50,000 a year, I guess that's a conversation we can have. But it also means that a... 
Yeah. Well, we'll invite you to join, you know, maybe prevailing wage for legislators. Um, workers oh. also receive health care when you're working on a prevailing wage job. And it also means that apprentices have a chance to get training to be able to be, you know, to be in one of these new careers. Uh, I was very proud to have earned the support of Assemblymember Logue and Assemblymember Gilmore and a lot of other folks that we're talking to as we're moving this bill through the process with prevailing wage. Uh, there seems to be a dispute with the Department of Industrial Relations. I believe they're going to testify that they think that this is some expansion in the prevailing wage law. We don't agree with that. Uh, and that's why we've asked to have it in this bill so it's clear. Otherwise, all that does is force lawsuits to have to happen and for folks to expend a lot of money to fight on both sides and it's a waste of taxpayers' money and a waste of uh, our money. Um, another group also mentioned that there's no set wage level for- Mr. Hanson, let's, let's move on real quickly, as quick as we can on this one. I don't want it to be on prevailing wages per se. This measure is about a lot of other stuff. Yeah. Uh, but your points are very well taken. Yeah. I understand. It's well, I mean, it, it comes down to the cost of the bill. You know, this is a this is no cost to the state. It's a great bargain, and good things will happen for the folks who get a chance to work on these jobs. And I hope that you'll see to supporting it. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Hanson. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Members of committee, Chris Walker, on behalf of the California Association of Sheet Metal and Air Conditioning Contractors, I cannot emphasize enough what difficult times our contractors are having right now. They keep hearing about the green jobs; they're not getting them. This is the type of bill that provides the capital that's needed in the marketplace to provide the jobs. We support the prevailing wage components. We think that's an important piece of this bill. This is a public benefit bill. Uh, we would ask for your support. Thank you very much. Uh, next witness. Seeing no other witnesses in support. Witnesses in opposition. We have another witness, okay. Go right ahead. Okay. Jennifer West on behalf of Sonoma County Water Agency. The water agency is taking this up this month um, in the next couple days for a support position. Thank you. Thank you very much. And am I going to make, make the assumption these are witnesses in support? Heidi Barsulli on behalf of Sempra Energy. We believe this bill will make it simpler for local governments to implement PACE programs, and we urge your eye vote. Okay, thank you. Next witness. Dillette Olberg from Edison calling in, er, in support of the bill. Thank you. Jerome Latore with the State Treasurer's Office in support. Uh, Mr. Chair and members, Don Gilbert representing San Francisco PUC in support. Thank you, Mr. Gilbert. Uh, any other witnesses in support? Seeing none. Witnesses in opposition? Good afternoon, uh, Mr. Chairman, members. Will Gonzalez on behalf of the California Solar Energy Industry Association. We're an association of over 200 solar uh, in contractors, installers, manufacturers, uh, all in obviously in the, in the solar business. Um, we would have supported this bill. It's a good bill. Unfortunately, the prevailing wage uh, amendment that was put in on uh, Thursday or Friday last week is a big problem for us. Um, first of all, I, I realize it's difficult times out there and folks are looking for good jobs bill. Unfortunately, if this bill, if this bill is successful to lower the interest rate on these loans by one or 2%, that savings is gonna be more than overshadowed by the increased labor costs. So we think you actually get no jobs out of this bill. Um, the other piece of this is, is just the precedent. We are taking ratepayer dollars and uh, creating a public works um, uh, requirement with that. Currently in California, we have the solar initiative, we have utility rebates, we have the self-generation incentive program, all ratepayer dollars, none triggered uh, by prevailing wage requirement. We think this uh, language, if, if uh, approved and put in statute, would create a precedent that would then trickle down to all other uh, ratepayer funded programs, and there's, there's many. Um, again, it's, it's unfortunate that we have to support this bill. It's, it's uh, aside from the uh, prevailing wage requirement, it's, 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 a, it's a good program, it's a good idea, but unfortunately we have to oppose. Thank, Thank you very much, Mr. Gonzalez. We do have a question uh, by Ms. Skinner. Question, clarification. The prevailing wage uh, uh, is only um, triggered for projects that are uh, commercial or larger than four unit residential and uh, above a certain threshold price, isn't that correct? Thank you. Thank you for bringing that up because that's a very important, this is a very narrow use of prevailing wage. All residential homes are not, are not included by this. 
and anything of uh, less than four units is not affected. So if you had a duplex or something up to four, not affected. Secondly, it only applies to commercial businesses uh, uh, that have improvements of greater than $25,000, but that's after the rebates and things are taken into a place. So let's say you have a federal rebate or other under the California Solar Initiative, maybe it was $40,000 worth of improvements, it knocks down to $24,000, not applying. And I wanna also point out, this program is voluntary for the homeowner and business. If they wanna participate in it with the local government, it's voluntary for the local government. If they want to access the state, the uh, program for the uh, loans being reduced in the state treasurer's office, the local government could say, um, you know, the, the residential component should go be aggregated in the state treasurer's office and maybe the larger businesses that are putting in improvements over 25,000, they'll keep with the local government program and not trigger any prevailing wage. There is a lot of flexibility in this program and it's voluntary for everyone. You know, Senator Pelvey, I, I will say this, that is a good point I want to underscore. Similar to 474, AB 474, that which was chaptered until I believe sometime last year by uh, Assembly Member Bob Blumenfield. Uh, with regards to water conservation, it was flexible because uh, it dealt with astroturf and cisterns and you know a bunch of other stuff uh, with regards to how we conserve water, but it was voluntary. Yeah. And I think that's a key component right there. And I think that when you narrow it down with, with regards to prevailing wages, uh, it is voluntary. So I think that is a key component right there. Any other questions from members? No other, do we have any other uh, folks in opposition? Seeing none, do you have, do you have a file? Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, we have two significant concerns with this proposal. Um, the first deals with the uh, use of the Renewable Resources Trust Fund. Uh, currently, the funds come from uh, the IOUs, the uh, investor-owned uh, utilities, but under this bill, they would benefit everyone, so both the munis as well as the IOUs, pretty much all users. Um, the transfer of $50 million from the Renewable uh, Resources Trust Fund, and again, I don't have the benefit of um, the amendments that are being yes. offered today in committee, but the funds, the Renewable Resources Trust Fund, um, SB1 in 2006 created the new solar roofs, um, new solar homes program, and allocated about $400 million for that program, of which the Energy Commission has indicated $250 million has already been um, earmarked, allocated. So that leaves $150 million left to meet the goal. There's only $130 million left in this fund. The fee will um, exist for one more year, bringing in another 40, brings it up to 170 million. We need 150 to fund a, um, SB1. So there would be insufficient funds in this account to do both this and the, um, to fully implement SB1. Our second concern does deal with the uh, prevailing wage component. Based on our analysis of the bill, again, as it is in print, uh, the improvements financed uh, by the proceeds of PACE would be considered a public work and as such uh, be subject to the prevailing wa wage standards. Um, I do have somebody here from the labor agency that can speak more to that point because I am not a labor expert if you had questions specifically. I, I don't think we're gonna go that, in that direction right now, but I do appreciate nonetheless uh, uh, your comments. Um, you always represent UF, obviously, uh, very well, uh, and you bring your perspectives. We do have a motion, uh, nonetheless, uh, made by uh, Mr. Mr. Amiano, has been seconded by Mr. Hall. I want to make sure if colleagues on both sides have any questions, any concerns, editorials, commentaries. I see none. You know, you do have. I, I just wanted to ask, as a point of clarification of Senator Padley, that the, the funds uh, that will be used for this program will be fully repaid over time. Isn't that correct? Uh, the, yes, I uh, guess that is, and it's, there's amendments taken that make it a lot more uh, palatable to the CEC where they actually ha keep control of the monies. They're not transferred, um, they actually stay. It. Excuse me? They're not actually transferred, they actually stay in the fund itself. That's right, yeah. but it's backed and secured yes. by a $50 million. Yeah. I want to point out the CSI, the California Solar Initiative, it's way undersubscribed. Very this program will allow greater access to average people to make these inner efficiency or solar improvements. Another highlight, I think Ms. Uh, Senator Palvey throwing a bunch of softballs, you know, which make it very appropriate. It's undersubscribed <laughs> given the, the condition of the housing market right now. 
This, in effect, is a bond insurance program to make sure these bonds are sold at a low rate, they, they're, and they're going to actually get paid, and they're going to get repayment on this. Uh, any other questions? Yeah. Seeing none, we have a question. Uh, Mr. Mike Davis. Uh, testimony that we heard with regard to the available funds uh, that would not be there. What are the realities of the funding uh, mechanisms as this program is implemented over time? How will we be able to meet the shortfall that allegedly, at least, has been discussed with us today? Well, the CSI's been around for a while, and, and everyone agrees there's over 130 or something million dollars there. It's been undersubscribed. Um, these are more expensive kinds of projects, and part of the reason it is undersubscribed, there wasn't a mechanism for reducing the loan and financing costs. This is 50 million out of that pot of money, sort of set aside, but under control of the CEC, so that to, to make the loans more attractable, to get better financing through, the, through this new mechanism, we have set that, side, that money aside. Will it be used? Maybe not. But that money will still be there under their control. Okay, thank you very much. See no other questions. We do have a motion made by Mr. Almeida, second by Mr. Hall. Uh, Ms. Pavley, thank you very much for your time, the witnesses in support as well as opposition. This measure passes on a B roll call as amended with Senator Nielsen as an I vote. Not voted. Let's strike that and let's make that for the record. Senator Nielsen, not voting. Ms. Pavley, thank you very much for your time. Uh, colleagues, members on both sides of the aisle, this concludes the business before this committee today. This committee is adjourned.